What's happening everybody? It's the Colorado Kid and today I am here to tell you why I am going from this to this. Let's go. All right, first things first, let me say this. This gimbal is incredibly capable for the price. For $160, you get one hell of a product in my opinion. This thing has actually served me really well and I'm kind of hesitant to switch over, okay? There's a couple reasons why I am switching over and I'm gonna tell you why within this video. But for $160, this thing has captured some amazing footage. You can look at some of the most recent footage I got from uh, Arizona. I'll put it up on screen right now. You can see this thing can do a very solid job. Yeah. Now, here is the ideal positioning for this gimbal. Here's what I've discovered, okay? This on the chest, okay? You notice how I've got the camera up top, okay? That's really important, really important, okay? Notice the positioning of the camera here, okay? If you were to flip it around, which I've seen some people do, fine. This totally works, the footage will be okay. Notice how it's this direction, but what happens when you go down a steep hill? Boom you have got this in your shot, okay? You have now got the gimbal in your shot. So it's not something you want. So I have found the most successful method of filming with this gimbal is right here, okay? Downwards, just like that, okay? Let's try to focus up. Okay, so now that we got it mounted on the Chest Pro, I'm gonna show you one of the problems you run into. Boom. Okay, so one of the problems you run into, okay? Here's the first thing it's gonna do, watch. When I turn this thing on, Okay, great, it's operational. What does it do? Oh, Jesus, turns right back off. Problem number one. One of the things that's really important about this gimbal also, you do have to try and balance it as much as possible. Problem is I found the GoPro Hero 7 is just heavy enough that you have to push it all the way to the left here. All the way to the left. And then it's still too much, still a little much. Good, solid, okay. Here's one of the things you're gonna notice when you first turn it on. What does it do? It flips towards me. That's useless for me. But I told you, we want to record in this position, okay? So when you go down hills, this part's not getting in the shot, okay? So what you got to do is rotate it around. Fine. That gives you a pretty adequate position, but you can't fine tune the position, okay? The way you do that is you have to do it from within the phone app, okay? And within the phone app, then you can make your final adjustments. And your final adjustment can be made here. So now that we've got it in the position, you can see this actually works pretty well here. Not bad. Not bad. All right, so if the gimbal's only $160 and it's a really good value for the price, why are we getting rid of it? First of all, a lot of the times when we're going down, this thing will just start to angle in its own direction and it'll just kind of stay there for about a minute or so or less and then come back into center. For whatever reason, I don't know why that happens, but it does, okay? And, it, and the result is that footage is pretty much useless. You'll see in some of this footage here that sometimes the gimbal just drifts upwards like this, okay? And then sometimes you just don't even see the handlebars of the bike anymore. So the footage is kind of ruined in that regard, okay? And sometimes it'll drift to the right. I noticed several times when I went out to Auburn, at the same spot, it started to kind of drift up and to the right a little bit, and the footage just basically became useless. So I kind of clipped those sections out as much as possible. Another bad thing about this, and I haven't had it happen within the last several rides when I first got the gimbal, it was the dreaded crotch cam. This happened several times. It would just, boom, point itself down to my junk. <laughs> I don't know why, I don't know how. But uh, it also happened with the MTB NorCal guys, and you can see that footage here. Plenty of junk cam to go around. One of the toughest things to deal with about this gimbal is its sheer unpredictabilitude. Okay. That's probably not a word, but you know what I'm trying to say. Sometimes when you turn it on, it'll face the right direction, and sometimes it won't, okay? Like, what in the hell good is having the camera face towards you? Why is that the initial position? I have to assume that the gimbal wants to start the other way, right? So if I turn it off, maybe the gimbal just wants to be in this position, right? Because here, turn it on, and its first inclination is to face forward. Again, the problem is when you go downhill, look, that happens. And that's probably why you get the crotch cam. If I had to make a guess, there's your crotch cam right there. There goes your footage right out the door. And sometimes when you're riding on the trail, it'll just wander and start facing a different direction or face down or you get the crotch cam. That is the hardest thing to deal with, unpredictability. Especially when you're trying to make a multi-million dollar enterprise like the Cali Rado Kid. YouTube, branding, 
you know, everything. We've got our own line of toilet paper. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a huge success. And you can't do that with unpredictability. So the important thing for you is to know the weaknesses of this gimbal. It still really works, but you will have some lost footage here and there. The dreaded crotch cam will come for you. I guarantee it. Another thing I'm not a big fan of on this gimbal is the way that you actually mount the camera to the gimbal. You can actually see the mounting screws here and here. The only way to get the camera off is to unscrew both of these and then you've got this small little black piece right here that you have to manage. So you gotta put it somewhere on the trail and it's highly likely you're gonna leave it on the ground at some point and it hasn't happened to me yet but uh, it does concern me. So that mounting system is not ideal in my opinion. Okay, the Karma Grip is far superior. It looks like you just clip it in and you're good to go. Gimbal noise. If you guys haven't heard gimbal noise, you may have heard it in videos and you may not know what it is. But I'm gonna give you an audio sample right now. One of the things I discovered is when trying to eliminate background noise and things like that, the gimbal noise is really prevalent, okay? And I especially noticed it here once I started going into this setup. You can see that there are several microphones on the GoPro. I've got windscreens on pretty much all of them. And I also talked about that there is a third one over here. Okay, if you see my little baby, let me, if you see my little baby windscreen here, it's black, so it's hard to see. There's actually a microphone right there. And that poses a problem because when you mount the gimbal like this, this microphone on this side turns out not only muffles the audio, but it picks up the gimbal noise, which is the motor noise. And I'm gonna isolate that left channel for you. You can hear it. So one of the ways I found to get rid of it within Adobe, once I tracked down the issue and figured out what it was, I was actually able to take the right channel and just bring it to both channels, okay? So it's essentially a mono mix to a certain degree. So I'm creating a mono mix from the right channel, which is the exterior mics over here, okay? And as a result, the audio is a lot cleaner. You get reduced gimbal noise. One of the things I noticed when I first powered up the Karma Grip is I could hear the gimbal noise, okay? With this one, when I powered up, I don't really notice it. But with the Karma Grip, when I powered that thing up, I could hear it and without a camera on it or anything. So I'm a little concerned that when I start rolling footage here that both channels are going to be ruined. I'm not sure if that's true, uh, but we're going to find out. So this weekend, I'm going to do a trial run on the Karma Grip. Obviously, you're going to get increased battery life and a couple other perks with this. Okay, the mounting system is a lot easier and all that. I'll kind of do a review mock-up of that once I do a first shoot with it. A lot of guys are using it. I think it's gonna be great, but I still got Old Faithful here, man. I don't know, I still kinda like it. I still kinda like it. So we'll see how it goes, okay? But that's the issues I've run into with this guy, and now it's time to try the Karma Grip. So this weekend is my first trial run, but for now, sweet, sweet WG2X, woo, you've been a beauty. But I'm gonna retire you for one day and see how it goes. So if you're using a gimbal, what gimbal are you using? I'm really curious to see what kind of issues you've run into. Is it the same thing? Are you seeing gimbal noise and whatever gimbal you have, no matter what? The W2, wait, the W, God, I, the WG2X is a solid purchasable option. What gimbals are you guys using? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like it, give it a like, give it a subscribe. Really appreciate the support and uh, stay tuned for the next writing video where I will probably crash.